So welcome back. Now, I'm Ted Thomas and I've been involved in the real estate business for over 30 years. Now this is something you can do as a side hustle part time or you can do it full time. So in today's episode, I'm going to be discussing what to know when buying land. Now there's a ton to know, so you're probably going to want to start a checklist and you can make some notes as I go along. So later on in the episode, I'm going to show you how to buy properties for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar, pennies on the dollar by buying a tax defaulted auction. But let's learn and learn a little bit about buying land and what you should know. All right, so this is a lucrative business that you can get involved in. And I'm going to show you step by step uh, what I think you should check first of all, and then I'm going to show you what professionals go and take a look at, which is a subset of the regular business. So regular real estate, they sell homes, they sell apartments, they sell office buildings, they sell residential land, whatever. Okay, so in the part of the business I'm involved in is a subset and it's called tax defaulted property. And what happens is in the regular real estate business, there's a certain percentage of people that don't pay their property taxes. And when that happens, those properties are going to end up at tax defaulted auctions. So I'll tell you a lot more about that. But right now, let's go into the basics. And we're going to talk about what to know when buying land. I'll be right back. Okay, so if you're going to buy land, it's full of surprises. I can tell you that. Now, most people buying houses don't realize how much work the developers and the builders have really handled. Now, there's a ton of legal issues, everything from zoning to easements to how you're going to attach utilities to, this, to the system, how you're going to get water, all those things. So there's a lot of headaches to solve before you could finish with a development. So buying land can be a headache from the start, but there's certain things that you just have to know. So newcomers, they don't know about that because they're usually buying homes in existing subdivisions. Now, in existing subdivision, everything is really done. What do I mean by that? Everything is really done. Well, the water is already attached to the, the utilities are already attached, the structure is already there. So what you could do is you could have a home inspector and they could check, a, check the property over and you're ready to go. Well, that doesn't always happen with land. All right. So when you purchase land, first of all, if you've got money to do that, that's great. But almost everyone in America wants to own property, so that could be a little competitive. But the other side of that is, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. What you really need to do if you're going to buy land is you need to get involved with a land broker. Now, I got to buy that and solve that whole problem because I buy it tax defaulted auction. All right, so most people don't even know, have any basic knowledge of just the land part of the business. They know about real estate because that's where the properties are. However, now we're talking about land. So what do you want to know before you do that? It's a lot different than buying a house, okay? Uh, first of all, it's difficult to appraise. It's going to be a controversial thing when it comes to appraisal. Why? All right. There's not many comparables. In other words, the lands are going to be different sizes. It's going to be different kinds of land. So getting an appraisal is not the easiest thing in the world. That's where you make sure you bring in professionals. You want to make sure you got a broker and someone help you do it. So land value is a different ball game. So a lot of judgments take place. It's not like a single family home. You can see one home's here. You can check what the home next door is, check what across the street. So single family homes are really easy in compared in comparison to doing the land. So let's talk about why it isn't so simple. So first of all, is there power to the lot? Does it have electricity? If it doesn't have, what's it cost, going to cost to bring the power there? All right. So that's just one utility. There's going to be other utilities. All right. Is it going to have telephone? Are they going to bring telephone cable there? Are they going to use just cell phones and that? All right. Are they going to bring water? What about water? Where's the water coming from? Are you buying water from the county? Are you close to the county? Or is everything in this on this land going to use well. And if you're going to have a well, how deep is the well going to be before you get good water? All right. So you've got these, these other complications that you don't have when you're buying residential real estate. Now, most, most agents don't handle this kind of business. So you need to have a broker and an agent that deals with land. You've got to get someone that's handling this kind of thing because they know and they know what to talk about. Now, if you have to start bringing in utilities, the utilities to bring them to the property might cost more than the property. So you're talking a lot of money, a lot of money. Now, does the property have to be changed, the shape of it? Are they going to have to grade it? Are they going to have to put lakes on it? Are they going to put roads on it? Well, all of those things are going to cost an awful lot of money. So if you don't understand that, 
How are you going to be buying that land? So what to know in buying land, you probably need a checklist of all the things that I'm talking about today. It would be wise to have a checklist because there's a lot of things to think about. Now, I'm not going to get into the zoning and the easements and the restriction that are required or getting into the county, appro- the county approvals. Now, builders do that all the time. So the builder developer, they have really solved a lot of problems. Now, I didn't want to get into solving those problems. So what I did, I made my business a subset of the regular real estate business. In other words, I wait till these properties have already been approved. And then when someone doesn't pay the taxes, then I look at them and say, wow, what could I do with that property? Because now it's going to sell for 60%, 70%, 80% discount. Well, if they get an 80% discount, holy Toledo, I know I can make some money on that. All right, so land is going to be a different ball game. So you're also dealing with the environment. Could there be contamination? You have to be concerned about that. What if someone had a machine shop there? What if there was oil rig on the property and it left oil spilled all over? All right, so if someone contaminates it, you're going to be you're going to be stuck with that. You're going to have to clean it up. All right, so what to know in buying land? Well, let's think about that. Do you want land that's going to that you're going to cultivate? You're going to, well, if you're going to cultivate, that must mean you're going to put crops on it. What kind of soil? If you thought about checking the soil, who does that? Maybe you want to just put timber on it, or maybe you want to use it for grazing land. I don't know what you want it for, but you need to decide what you're going to use that property for before you buy anything. All right, you always have to have good water. All right, that means you might have to pay to bring water to the property. If you have to do that, you better figure out what the cost of that is before you make any offers on that land. All right, are you going to raise cattle on it and just use it as grazing land? Is that legal? Well, how much cattle can you put on there? There's probably restrictions. You can't put a herd of cattle, but you probably couldn't put some. I don't know what the restrictions are, but the land broker will know that and be able to tell you what those restrictions are. All right, now I'm not a pessimist and I'm not I'm not negative, but I know that if we sugarcoat this, a lot of people are going to get involved and they're going to get in a lot of trouble. All right, don't put up any money until you know what you're going to do with that property. You have to think differently if you're going to buy land rather than buying in subdivisions. Subdivisions, all the headaches have been handled for you. I bypass all the headaches by going into the business of buying tax defaulted property. So when I discovered that, I discovered that 3,000 counties in the United States will sell tax default to property. Now, why did they sell those? It's because the legislature has already passed laws that said everybody pays tax. If you don't pay tax, the county treasurer is going to issue a levy on that property. They're going to try to collect that levy of taxes. If they can't collect it, the treasurer is going to seize the property. They're going to confiscate it, going to kick people off it, and they're going to sell it. And when they sell it, they're going to sell it from more than likely for a 60, 70, even 80% discount. Now, folks, I'm selling property in the United States to people outside the United States. How do we do that? Well, we teach them how to buy it themselves, and they can buy because within a subdivision, it's easy to appraise it. All right, it's very difficult to know the value of land outside of a subdivision, but inside the subdivision, it will have a land value and it's very easy. So I have students in places like Saskatchewan, which is a big province in Canada, and they'll buy in the United States. They can buy in all 50 states and all 3,000 counties. Why? Because we can figure out the values and we have laws that tell how these properties are going to be sold. So the law is that the county will sell the property at a 60, 70, 80 percent discount. That means you could buy for 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. Now, I didn't make those rules. The legislature made the rule. The legislature passes it down to the county commissioners and the and the board of supervisors, and they tell the treasurer, levy the tax, collect the tax. If you can't collect the tax, then go ahead and seize the property. They then sell that property 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. All right. The county doesn't want the property. They already own the municipal buildings. They own the parks. They own the schools. But they want to sell it because they have a lot of bills to pay. Now, what kind of bills do they have to pay? They have to pay the county employees. They have to pay the school teachers. They have to pay all the county bills. So they're going to sell those properties for pennies. Well, if you could buy a property for an 80% discount, you tell me, could you make some money on it? Well, if you check the right one. All right. Now, the county has bills to pay, so they're just getting rid of property. Now, 3,000 counties are going to sell at auction. All right. These auctions are always publicized. They're always a public auction. Anybody can attend. You can find them on the county website. You can find them in the local newspaper. All right. They're vacant lots. 
All right, now vacant lots could be sold for, for low prices because everybody is buying houses. So I can tell you right now, about 25% of all properties at auction are going to be land. Now, sometimes it's land that's vacant residential lots. Sometimes it's open land where it's 10 acres or 20 acres or 30 acres, but they're going to sell that at rock bottom dollar. Well, if you can buy those properties at 60 or 70% uh, discounts, well, then you whatever you make after you buy that property is going to be yours to keep. So I have a client that came from Saskatchewan. He looked at the property in Riverside online. He stayed online. Property had a value of $229,000. All right. So the county wanted to sell it. He bought it at auction. He bought it for only 15% of the value. Now think about that. He bought it for 15 cents on the dollar. All right, so what did he do? Well, he sold it and he sold it and made himself $20,000. All right, he didn't have to work very hard at selling it because he sold it way under the market. Why did he sell it way under the market? Because he bought it low, he just sold it low, made himself $20,000. All right, now is every deal like that? No, some of the deals are much bigger than that. My point is the tax defaulted auctions are taking place 5,000 times a year. Anybody can buy at those auctions that has money to do it. Now, my name is Ted Thomas. If you would like to see what an auction list looks like, I can get you a sample of that auction list just by going right below me right now, and you can, you can apply for and get a sample auction list. Tax defaulted properties, auctions are happening in every county across the United States across the year.